PvP isn't the first thing that comes to mind when I'm looking for my next big MMORPG. A few games, namely World of Warcraft and Guild Wars 2, or even the Faction vs. Faction vs. Faction Space Warfare MMO FPS Planet Side 2, all had fantastic and well thought out PvP in the bag, but those games are few and far between. Amazon's New World, on the other hand, may have something up its sleeve for PvP players between faction based territories world PvP and its marquee feature, the 20 vs 20 player PvPvE mode Outpost Rush. Speaking of the latter, I recently got the opportunity to play a round of Outpost Rush on its premier map, Nothanos Island, with Amazon Games creative director David Furfayi, who personally walked me through many of Outpost Rush's systems and the layout of the map itself. It is a it's a timed mode where the objective is to get to a thousand points first. You get points by controlling the forts in the middle, uh, or by getting PVP kills. My overall experience was positive. New World's positional combat system, which focuses on action rather than strategy, felt just as natural when engaging in large-scale battles against other players as it did when I was going up against a boss in PVE mode. And even despite having a spotty connection to the game server, I found that things went pretty smoothly. I experienced no crashes, lagouts, or serious bugs that jarred me away from Outpost Rush's fast-paced skirmishes beyond some rubber banding. That said, if you can't find 39 other people to play with, you'll find yourself spending plenty of time waiting in the queue menu before you even reach Nothinos Island. I got stuck in the 30 minute queue before the demo session could begin, so I spent that extra time decking out my ice gauntlet and bow skills in order to make myself a master in area of effect spells and ranged damage. In keeping with my attempt to balance my health and damage dealing capabilities, I loaded up on the constitution, intelligence, and dexterity stats. And I see you're using pylon, that's a great move, especially in PvE, like when you get to a nice POI. Uh, you just slap that thing down and bring people to it. To my satisfaction, balancing the ice gauntlet and the bow came in handy a ton once the fighting started, and swapping weapons when specific circumstances arose also felt totally natural. Switching weapons mid-combat is as slick here as it is in Guild Wars 2 or Elder Scrolls Online. Nothanos Island itself is decently sized, but not too large. There are around three different bases to capture, at least one major boss fight, and a bunch of different smaller locations, like the mines or the wolf den, where you can go hunt and gather resources. The topography of the map is coated with thick jungles and ruins that are perfect to stage traps and ambushes against other players from, inversely making it feel like danger could be lurking around any corner. The only way to get Azoth is by killing uh, the AI enemies in the farms, and then you can use that to sort of bolster your war efforts. During the short stretches between major PvP fights, we found ourselves chopping down Azoth-infused trees and slaying monsters in order to buy special items at the shops located inside of our captured fortresses. So you see the storage shed over here. Just d drop your resources in there. Had I saved up a little bit more and died just a smidge less, I could have purchased the summoning token that would have allowed me to bring a powerful monster onto my team's side like the Summon Brute. Some of the objectives around the map, so we saw Baroness Hain, the other one is the Corrupted Portal, uh, and you saw that uh, the Brute, the sort of like ogre demonic looking thing that was spawned, uh, when you beat that objective and you deposit Azoth there, you get a summoning stone that allows you to summon one of those. So that's another one of the big objectives. I saw map. a few such summoned enemies come into play from the enemy team's side, yet actually fighting these beefy summoned foes was a huge nuisance. I can't speak to how balanced the system ultimately is in its current state, given that summoning tokens themselves are awfully expensive, but it's clear that there are real benefits to pursuing the PvE elements here, simply because through well-timed excursions, you can save up enough Azoth to effectively steamroll the opposing team, or at least cause them a whole bunch of inconvenience. Baroness Hain is the name of the boss on the right hand side of the map, but the boss battle itself isn't as interesting as the rat race that ensues between both teams in the Baroness's arena. Conveniently, a timer tracks the Baroness's respawn time and displays the amount of time until she respawns on the upper corner of the screen, meaning that you're likely to fight a large detachment of enemy players if you choose to go after her. But the reward for beating Baroness Hain and stealing those same points away from the opposite team is too great to justify passing up. What makes this fight extra tense is the fact that it's the team which gets the killing blow who receives the lion's share of the rewards. The real meat of Outpost Rush is the fortress capture mechanic. Storming an opposite team's fortress usually results in massive clashes between players, and it's in these clashes where most of the player versus player combat happens. That said, fortresses were pretty small and seemed almost claustrophobic to fight in. I still enjoyed getting up atop the battlements and raining fire down on my foes with my bow, or taking advantage of the tight-knit quarters of the fortress grounds to insta-freeze large groups of enemies with my ice gauntlet. And then we briefly saw the, the siege weapons, uh, and those can be really fun. You can build them defensively in the fort when you own them, 
what's even more neat is is sort of the ability to to build them uh, to sort of do an offensive siege. Like when there's a nice deadlock, building that uh, is a cool way to sort of break down the doors and, and help the battle. But after about 30 minutes, the match ended, and I was left with a solid impression of what Outpost Rush is all about. And it's targeted at those short 30 minute gaming sessions where you'll be able to get in and make progress even if you don't have much playtime beyond 30 minutes. Whether it'll hold up over the long run isn't quite clear yet. The only slated map for launch is Nothanos Island. This being the case, I have to wonder how much fun it would be to play this after my 50th or 100th match. Time will tell whether Outpost Rush is a hit. For more on New World, check out our recent preview of Amory Excavation, and for everything else in the world of video games, stick with IGN.